final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 11093 in the name of Alex Ferguson on Mum's last big challenge. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would invite those members who are leaving the chamber to do so quickly and quietly and also to invite members who are staying if they wish to speak to press the request to speak buttons now. Now call on Alex Ferguson to open the debate. Mr Ferguson, seven minutes, please. Um, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I would just say that I am absolutely delighted to have been able to bring this motion to the Chamber this evening, not simply because it allows us to focus on what I think is a very worthwhile topic, but particularly because it allows me to highlight the work of two of life's true angels, one a Scot, one a Malawian, who seem to me to, be, to have been put on this earth with a predetermined aim of making it an infinitely better place to inhabit. The first will, I think, be acutely embarrassed because, if my eyesight is right, I think I'm pleased to say that she's been able to join us in the gallery this evening. Linda MacDonald, along with some of her key volunteers who have made her charitable trust better known to all of us as mums, she's made it work so effectively since it was founded in 2005. Linda started the charity after seeing photographs of Bottom Hospital in Lilongwe, the capital of Malawi. Photographs that clearly showed the filthy, unhygienic conditions into which pregnant mothers were supposed to be able to deliver their babies. I think it's worth noting that in the UK in 2013, one in every 4,600 women could be expected to die in pregnancy or childbirth. In Malawi in that same year, it was one in every 36. One in every 36 women could expect to die simply because they had become pregnant. So no wonder that Linda, who is a practicing midwife, midwife, was so shocked by the photographs she was shown. Every single one of us would have been, but I suspect very few of us would have thought, well, that's enough. I'm going to go and do something about this and try to make a difference. And so Mums was born. A recipe book was produced, the first in a series. Jack McConnell, our former First Minister, brought Mums to the attention of this Parliament. And Mums became instrumental in raising the £100,000 that saw a new purpose-built maternity unit being built at Boiler Hospital. Once that unit began to operate, the book that previously recorded the daily, daily deaths of babies and the weekly deaths of mothers was barely required any longer. I had the enormous privilege of visiting Boiler Hospital in 2011 and I could only marvel at the charts of infant and mother mortality that had been so meticulously kept since the new unit had been built and which had proved so vividly that the £100,000 investment had produced a return that could never be calculated in financial terms. It had produced a safe environment in which you could give birth. But mums couldn't and didn't stop there. It had well and truly taken root and over the years, it has raised huge amounts of money that has been thoughtfully and carefully targeted at improving the lives of mothers, babies and families in Malawi. Feeding stations for under five-year-olds have been set up, nursery teachers funded, drinking water sourced, basic toilet facilities researched. All this and much more has been achieved by mums. And somewhere along the way, a very fortuitous contact was made with a lady called Charity Salima, the second angel that I referred to earlier. I also visited charity at her Achi Kondi clinic in 2011. I did so again in 2013. I'm not actually sure I could ever visit Malawi again without visiting that clinic. The name literally means a caring home because both the clinic and the story that led up to its establishment are truly inspirational. Charity Salima was a research nurse working for the Malawi government. But so appalled did she become at the type of death rates I referred to earlier, and through her increased knowledge and experience of the conditions that pregnant women in Lilongwe had to survive, that she, just like Linda really, just came to the conclusion that enough was enough. So in 2008, using her own meager resources and with the backing of the National Organization of Nurses, she rented a property in District 23 and established her own maternity clinic though I suspect you and I would probably not recognize it as such if we happened upon it. But that clinic and Charity Salima are now well on their way to delivering their 6,000th baby without having to record a single death 
of either mother or child in the six-year history of that clinic. And charity being charity doesn't stop at that. She also provides antenatal and postnatal care to mothers and babies. She runs an under fives clinic and feeding station. She provides HIV testing and runs a family planning advice service, all done and achieved without any government funding whatsoever. I can say with total sincerity that she, Charity Salima, is one of the most remarkable human beings that I've ever come across. And since 2009, Mums has supported charity through a monthly donation and in addition has funded a badly needed ambulance to increase the catchment area from which pregnant mothers can access this extraordinary place. But now a new challenge has emerged and it's the one I want to highlight through this debate this evening. The owner of the Ache Condé Clinic has increased the rent. Well, on its own, that might have been bearable, but in a particularly unhelpful move, he has begun to build a house just seven feet from the front wall of the clinic itself, compromising obviously the access, but much more importantly, the privacy that the clinic currently enjoys. The clinic simply could not continue to operate under those circumstances. So in typical charity style, she has bought a plot of land and with the assistance from the Norwegian Nurses Association, begun to build a new purpose-built 17-bed clinic. But she's run out of money, which is where the title of my motion, Mum's Last Big Challenge, comes in. Mum's is looking to amalgamate with another charity for the most understandable of reasons. Its success has been such that it has become a more than full-time task to administer, and the Trust has decided that amalgamation would best secure its aims as we go forward. But it set itself one final challenge of raising the £15,000 that charity needs and in doing so by Christmas. It's produced a, a donate to charity pack of which I have one and I can get more, giving all the advice needed to individuals and organisations to raise just £100 each towards the total. And everyone who does so will be immortalised on a plaque on the wall of the new clinic when it opens. So through this debate, I hope that perhaps we MSPs can do a little to help to raise awareness of this initiative in our constituencies and regions. I have some of the packs with me and can get more, as I say. And if members are wondering perhaps how to dispose of the charitable fee that we're sometimes offered uh, for participating in some of the surveys that seem to proliferate at this time of year, I can think of no better cause to donate to. But that aside, presiding officer, the motion I've tabled before us gives us an opportunity as a parliament to say thank you to Linda MacDonald and Mums for the truly remarkable work they've undertaken over the years. Work that is not done for, for glory, for gain or for recognition, but for the simple satisfaction of doing what is right and in doing so to improve the lives of so many others who are so much less fortunate than we are beyond all recognition. I feel very privileged to move the motion in my name. Thank you, presiding officer. Okay. <clears throat> and I call on Patricia Ferguson to be followed by Maureen Ward. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It's a pleasure always to be able to speak in a debate about Malawi, but this particular debate is one that I think uh, says everything about the relationship between Scotland and Malawi itself. As many colleagues know, and as Alec Ferguson uh, so eloquently put forward in his motion this evening, for which he deserves congratulations for securing uh, both the motion and the debate. Um, the situation in Malawi with regard to child and mater maternal mortality has been, and still is, challenging. However, the fact that when I first visited Malawi in 2006, one baby was dying every day and one mother every week was a shocking figure to hear about and a shocking situation to witness. To know that now in some of the hospitals in Malawi where mums and other organisations have been so active that there is now no need to record that kind of information on that kind of scale and that instead it's the progress of the babies and the mums that's being recorded is something that is really quite remarkable. No stronger word, or no word could really do it justice, but remarkable is probably as good as any. 
And the efforts of mums have been particularly inspirational in my view because what sounded like a relatively small idea at the beginning to have a book of recipes, some of which I still use to this day, I have to admit, which was very useful in my particular home, um, but the fact that a book of recipes would be used in this way to raise money for such an important aspect of Malawian life is really quite an interesting concept in itself and demonstrates that actually it is those personal contacts, it's those personal relationships between Scotland and Malawi that are helping to make such a difference. As we know, mums have contributed large sums, not just to helping mums delivering their babies and uh, having uh, postnatal care, but also, uh, again, equally large sums of money helping to prevent mother-to-child HIV transmission and to help health workers who've become infected through their work. They fund feeding stations and they boost the chances that children born in Malawi now have of living full, long and fulfilling lives. So the latest project that Mums is supporting, as we've heard, is uh, the work of Charity Salima and never was someone better named. That work has been highlighted in a number of ways to date and her work really is significant. The results achieved in her clinic are fantastic. I haven't had the opportunity to visit that particular clinic myself, but I have read a number of articles and comments about it and it clearly is making a huge difference for the mums in that particular part of Malawi. And a few years ago, a book was written, uh, When the Rains Come, uh, by the writer Tom Pau, which was frankly just a delight to read. It was a lovely book, it was happy and uplifting, and it was beautifully illustrated too. And it was one of those books that just told the story of an ordinary family in Malawi or anywhere, it could have been anywhere in Africa for that matter, uh, going about their lives and living that life to the full. Of course, as in any family, there was an indomitable grandmother and it was good to see the similarities that were coming to play there. And that book raised significant sums of money, and I hope, it, I think it's still available now, and can help toward the um, fundraising that Alec Ferguson mentioned. As I said at the beginning, the relationship between Scotland and Malawi has, I think, been significant, but it's also been one of the, perhaps, hallmarks of this parliament that we recognised that there was work to be done and we set about doing it. But in some ways, while our and the government's um, good efforts have been uh, worthwhile and have been very important, to me, as much as anything else, it has been the spotlight that this parliament and the government over years has now been able to shine on the work going on in Malawi and the need in Malawi that's been most important. And nowhere is that more obvious than in the work being done by mums and particularly by Linda MacDonald since 2005. I very much hope that they do raise enough money by Christmas to be able to fulfil their ambition. I hope and I'm sure that with this Parliament's help and support they will do. Thank you. Thanks very much. <clears throat> and now call on Maureen Watt to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I draw the Parliament's attention to my register of interest as convener of the Cross Party Group on Malawi? in this Parliament. Can I too congratulate Alex Ferguson on securing this debate this evening to highlight the work of the charity Malawi Underprivileged Mothers or Mums as we've all come to know it. I commend Alex and his continuing interest and enthusiasm for all things related to Malawi. Among other things, presiding officer, we had to do during our cross-party visit to Malawi in January 2011 was a kind of recce to see which projects uh, Annie Lennox should visit the following month when uh, Alex, as in his role as PO, then was accompanying her. Um, like many others, Alex was captivated by the warm heart of Africa and the projects he visited and his commitment continues, hence the motion in his name today. Um, and obviously he was really captivated by uh, visiting the mum's work in Malawi. Um, 
This latest effort of Mums and uh, Linda, the founder, to build a 17-bed capacity purpose-built clinic is truly remarkable and commendable, and I know how difficult it is to raise uh, money for Malawi, but Mums fundraising uh, capacity is uh, legendary in this place, as other people's people have mentioned. Uh, Mary Scanlon had a debate in 2009 um, when uh, Jack McConnell spoke and he was the one who was distributing the cookbook uh, at that time in this place and badgered us all uh, to buy it and contribute to it. And prior to that, even in 2008, Mike Pringle said in a debate, I have found that one cannot say no to Linda. Now, I'm sure he meant only in relation to stumping up money and uh, helping the projects rather than anything else. But, presiding officer, Malawi is making progress in meeting the Millennium Development Goals, particularly in relation to poverty reduction, access to improved sources of water and improvement in the lives of slum dwellers. But in relation to infant mortality and maternal, maternal health, there is still much to do and many other people like Linda in Scotland have taken up the challenge. Um, Patricia Ferguson mentioned some of the, the problems facing uh, people as they try to uh, reduce child uh, mortality and, and maternal health and materna maternal um, death and one, one of them is of course providing a safe environment for uh, birth to take place and indeed making sure that the mother's health uh, during pregnancy is the best um, that it possibly can be. Um, and obviously one of the things that is really is important is making sure that the proportion of births attended by skilled health personnel is um, as high as it can be. And while in urban areas, it is improving um, a great deal. There is still uh, a bit more to be done in the rural areas. And I'd just like to take this opportunity of mentioning um, a project uh, run by the University of Aberdeen Institute of Applied Health Sciences, whose objective is to encourage the integration of rural midwives in the local health serv service uh, health system in order to maintain their skills and increase their job satisfaction in local communities. Um, and I know there is still um, much work to be done in, the, in that area, but we must commend and support uh, the many people like Linda and Mums who are continuing to work in this area in Malawi. It's much appreciated. I know there is um, some disconnect between the work of the charities uh, and Scotland-Malawi partnership are trying to make sure that they are in tune with uh, the government of Malawi and it's perhaps something that you could take up, Minister. I look forward to hearing your contribution. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you. I now call on Liam MacArthur, after which we'll move to the closing speech from the Minister. Thank you very much, Deputy President Officer. Can I join with my colleagues in congratulating uh, Alex Ferguson on uh, the motion and securing the debate, as others have testified um, Alex Ferguson's uh, commitment to uh, and, and passionate support for this parliament and this country's links with Malawi uh, is a matter of record. To the point, in fact, where he's been prepared to be Annie Lennox's bag carrier, uh, which is, I think, above and beyond the call uh, of duty for most presiding officers. Um, like uh, Patricia Ferguson, Maureen Watt and Alex Ferguson, uh, I have felt very fortunate in, in being able in the role as uh, MSP to develop uh, my own links with, uh, with Malawi, uh, often born of the, the, the links that community groups, schools and others uh, in my own constituency uh, have fostered over the years. I think that's developed an awful lot of, of excellent work, uh, whether in the area of education or health uh, or indeed uh, economic uh, development. The project MUMS was one I was less familiar with, and I think in that uh, sense uh, today's debate serves uh, a, a further additional uh, useful purpose. But raising awareness uh, is the easy bit. 
Um, as Alex Ferguson, in, in, in his opening remarks, uh, made clear, the really remarkable work of what he called the true angels uh, is the hard stuff. Uh, Linda MacDonald, much has been said of her. I, I have to say, uh, if there's anybody that can get Mike Pringle to do what they ask, uh, where on earth were they when we needed a Liberal Democrat chief whip in previous parliaments? Uh, Char uh, Charity Salima, uh, likewise. Um, the... Uh, the, the the sort of work that humbles uh, all of us, and I think um, Alex Ferguson was right to pay eloquent testimony uh, to that. I was on the, the same visit as Maureen Watt um, to Malawi back in 2011, and I think one of the most striking um, aspects of that uh, trip was the visit to a settlement in the outskirts of Lilongwe to visit um, a mother who uh, had been uh, diagnosed as HIV positive um, uh, during the course of a previous visit by a Scottish Parliament delegation. I think, truth be told, no one really expected her to still be alive um, in, in 2011. Uh, it was remarkable to see uh, the recovery that she'd made. It was evidence that the antiretroviral programme um, but the fertiliser programme that was ensuring that markets at least had uh, food that could support the antiretroviral uh, programme was available, and the education um, investment that had gone in. All of those were coming together um, to, to, to start to move things in the, in the right direction. I think it's, it's too easy to, to succumb to a council of despair. Uh, and as Patricia Ferguson um, suggested, uh, I think we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that um, some of those projects are delivering real benefits here and now. Um, not that there isn't a, 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 an awful lot still to do, but should give us uh, confidence that the interventions we're making uh, work. Despite that progress, the figures are very bleak. Life expectancy in Malawi, I think, is still around uh, 37 years. The paternal death rate is still eight in every 1,000. One child in 10 dies before the age of uh, 10. And two nurses die every week from HIV. And I think, again, the parallel with that and, and teachers, where the attrition rate of teachers passing away through to uh, HIV AIDS is undermining efforts to build capacity uh, in, in, in the school sector, just as it appears to be happening uh, in, in health care. Uh, and I think that is a source of real, real concern. But it underscores the need uh, for projects like MUMS uh, and the work being done by Linda MacDonald, Charity Salima and their colleagues. Um, the objectives of this, and Malawi's children should be well nourished uh, and have educational opportunities. All mothers deserve safe and caring maternity provision. Uh, supporting nurses with AIDS, at risk of um, contracting AIDS, or, or simply concerned about uh, the risk. So, working closely with local communities and giving them the confidence and the capacity uh, to help themselves. All of those objectives are ones that we should be supporting. Uh, raising awareness and encouraging others to support. So, Deputy Presiding Officer, last year the MacArthur family agreed to forgo a few presents at Christmas in order to adopt a snow leopard. Uh, this year I can think of no better cause than supporting Linda MacDonald and mums towards their target of £15,000 to complete their clinic before the end of the year. Immortalising on plaques seems to be very much in the zeitgeist uh, of this week. Uh, but uh, in conclusion, can I congratulate Alex Ferguson again on securing this important debate. I uh, promise to see him afterwards to settle my debts and offer my thanks to the true angels doing so much good work in the warm heart of Africa. Thank you. Well done. <clears throat> I now call on Humza Yousaf, Minister of Seven Minutes, or thereby please to close the debate. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I thank Alex Ferguson for securing uh, this very important motion uh, to the Chamber. I thank uh, Linda MacDonald, uh, Charity Slima, and all the hard team at the uh, Achi Conde Clinic for all the good work and hard work uh, that they do. The Presiding Officer, there's nothing like an uh, impending government reshuffle to uh, focus uh, the mind on the portfolio. And uh, I definitely uh, I can say without any fear or favour uh, that this portfolio is by far uh, the best in the government. This is maybe the best kept secret, actually, uh, in government. The reason for that is that I get to see, I get to talk about, I get to engage with those who are making some of the best change uh, in the world. And Mum's an ex is an example of giving a gift that is that you cannot put a price on, a gift of life, a gift of uh, a child, uh, a healthy child, uh, and a gift of life to, to a mother is something that you can't quantify. Uh, I uh, often talk about, and I think when we speak about Malawi, we often talk about the historical context. And that historical context of Malawi, uh, of course, is, is very important. It helps to set the foundation of that relationship that we have in the present and will continue to take forward 
in the future. That historical context usually centres around uh, that uh, amazing uh, Scot, uh, Dr David Livingstone. Uh, he was an explorer, uh, we know at heart, uh, but also a medic, uh, a missionary, uh, of which he wasn't particularly good at, only converting one person, and apparently him, that person becoming a lapsed Christian. But nonetheless, uh, he also talked about uh, the three C's, Christianity being one, commerce being the other, and civilization uh, being the third. And I always think there's not enough attention paid to the civilization part. And that civilization, uh, if you read some of his manuscripts, was, uh, of course, talking about the slave trade, but generally uh, also the discussion that humanity is one humanity and that we should come together to face global challenges that affect us all, regardless of your race or your colour or your religion or where you come from. And that is ultimately what Dr David Livingstone meant uh, by civilization. And I'm delighted that his legacy that he taught us uh, is being carried down this day by people like Linda, by, of course, uh, her colleagues in uh, Malawi, uh, but also uh, our children as well. I still keep very much uh, in touch and close, uh, a close eye on the good work of people like Martha Payne, a young girl uh, who, of course, is helping with Mary's Meals and feeding young school children uh, in Malawi. But the point of the historical context of that relationship, presiding officer, is that it helps to, uh, helps to inform our present relationship. Uh, I just came back from uh, Geneva. Uh, I was in Geneva last week for a couple of days talking about our international development work. They were very uh, interested, uh, the United Nations, about Scotland, what Scotland was doing. And uh, all of them, all of the uh, officials that I spoke to said that it's not about the size of your contribution, of course, as important as that can be, but it's about the impact and the leadership uh, which Scotland is showing. And we have this relatively modest international development program, uh, nine million pounds a year, of which three million is, is, is ring-fenced uh, from Malawi. But th from that, uh, that small pot, we support over 50 projects in Malawi. Uh, unique, uh, because not because of the top-down relationship, as important as that government-to-government -government relationship is, but unique because of that bottom-up relationship where the entire civic society of Scotland is involved from the very north uh, of our country, from the, from the constituency of... Uh, uh, I was about to call him General MacArthur from uh, earlier contributions, but um, Mr. MacArthur, Liam MacArthur's uh, constituency in Orkney, uh, of which I've met uh, some of those involved in the relationship, right down uh, to the borders and, and through to Selkirk, where I've met uh, uh, those involved in the relationship with Malawi too. But not only does it cover the country in terms of its geography, but in terms of its demography too. I've met uh, people, teachers, students, nurses, uh, professionals, business people, uh, all involved in this relationship. In fact, uh, a study from the Scottish Malawi Partnership uh, showed that 84,000 Scots are involved in the relationship with Malawi. A country of 5 million people, 84,000 of them are involved in helping to improve the lives of their fellow uh, man, uh, woman and child in Malawi. 50% of people know somebody who's involved in the relationship in Malawi, according to that same survey. And 97% of people think uh, favourably about the relationship between Scotland and Malawi. Here, in this time of financial restraint, uh, economic austerity, food banks, difficult times for people, yet they're still in favour of committing our resources, uh, but also our energy and our efforts to improve the lives of those who are much worse off than us. Uh, like uh, those who have spoken uh, already, presiding officer, and very uh, eloquent uh, contributions. Uh, I too have been uh, to Malawi, and uh, it is quite difficult to understand the realities of abject poverty until you witness it yourself, until you speak to a mother who's had to uh, bury her child because of malnutrition, uh, because uh, uh, when you speak to a child who's been orphaned uh, because his parents have such a low life expectancy, as Liam MacArthur was saying. Uh, in a world of plenty, we have to watch, uh, we see, uh, and we hear uh, the figures that were quoted by Patricia Ferguson uh, about those mothers uh, that still die uh, simply because they've become pregnant in this uh, 21st century. It is actually a, a great disgrace and a shame uh, on us all that in the 21st century, that uh, women will have to walk up to 30 kilometers while in labor then having to suffer through the pain of a fistula, a delayed labour, which not only causes their child to be stillborn, but causes them internal damage, tissue damage, which affects the rectum, the bladder, uh, leaving them incontinent. No way they can have another child if that fistula is not repaired. Then they, some of them, unfortunately, divorced because they uh, won't be able to produce children. Outcast from entire communities. Imagine this in the 21st century. 
So maternal health is incredibly important to the Scottish Government, the issue of maternal health. We fund eight projects in Malawi, including one in uh, Buela Hospital, a long way. Uh, and uh, I visited the Fistula Care Centre uh, in Buela Hospital, uh, where Linda, uh, Charity uh, and the team uh, also uh, work. And working with the Iron Globe uh, Freedom from Fistula Foundation, I got to see how uh, women who suffered from fistulas and uh, various complications of uh, maternal uh, of, of pregnancy, uh, how they get their lives back by being given the opportunity of having a solar-powered uh, battery uh, where they could uh, uh, charge other people from the village and from their town to come to use it, uh, have an income for themselves, and therefore go from outcast uh, to being business leaders in their communities. Uh, and I note and commend the range of good work that's done by mums that others have mentioned, from the anti and the postnatal uh, care to the HIV testing to the plan uh, family planning advice, which is simple but also incredibly important. I hope that individuals and organisations will dig deep to support them. Uh, Linda uh, McDonald's uh, personal drive uh, we've heard much about. Uh, I would be looking forward, hopefully, if I can catch on after this debate to say a quick hello. But from everything that I hear, she sounds like a phenomenal fundraiser. She should be quite careful because a political party might snap her up uh, if she continues such a record. And also of Charity Salima, uh, she is quite rightly described as a miracle, a miracle nurse. Thousands of babies and not one death since 2008. I agree entirely with Alex Ferguson's description of them uh, as angels. And I simply say that every single member of this parliament should certainly see uh, what they can do to help mums. And I certainly uh, will be happy uh, to do that as well. But these two uh, women and their team, and their team, uh, through the work that they do with mums, uh, certainly help re-establish my faith uh, in humanity in often a, a very difficult world. And I end on uh, these words that a greatness of a nation is not measured presiding officer by its economic wealth or its military might, uh, but by how it treats the most vulnerable uh, in its society. And in this globalised world that we live in today, then we can demonstrate, I think, our greatness through the work that is done uh, by mums and, of course, many other charities and good people that help to improve the lives of the least fortunate and the most vulnerable on our, on our uh, planet. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I thank you all. I now close this meeting of Parliament.